So I think, let me look here. Um, now we're live. Okay. Hello, good evening, or good morning, or good afternoon, or good whatever time of night or day it happens to be, wherever you happen to be. This is Liviano with Republic News. I'm coming to you with another live stream. And tonight, we expect at least one more guest, and um, for the moment, it's just myself and Union Aerospace, uh, whom you met in the stream before last. He is an archaeology history student um, from Spain. So, uh, you were talking about near Automata. Mm -hmm. that, so, that was. So, tell me about it. I mean, I've played a little bit of it, but I haven't played nearly enough yet. I mean, I've played for like maybe an hour and a half total. <laughs> well, what do you want me to tell? Do you want me to tell anything specific about that game in particular? I don't know. It just seems a very intense game. I've enjoyed what I did play of it. I meant to get back to it, but something uh, interfered, and then I, so many other things have come up since then that I just haven't gotten back to it yet. Oh well, uh, do you want uh, do you want me to do it with a no spoilers uh, explanation? Sure, no spoilers would be cool. No spoilers. Okay. Well, basically the. The, the game is absolutely amazing. Uh, how is it amazing? Because it has uh, all of everything. The visuals are impressive. Uh, soundtrack, amazing and, and a ver a very, a very cool to hear. The characters, oh my god, the characters. <laughs> I, I kind of love them in that regard. Mostly because, uh, mostly because there was also a bit of a controversy with... Uh, with uh, the main character of uh, Nier Automata, you know, you know of 2B, right? 2B, yes. There was apparently some people complaining that uh, 2, why was 2B wearing heels, uh -huh. right? And the only answer Yoko Taro gave uh, was, it's just, uh, it's just because I like girls. <laughs> right, that's right. The, that's the only, the only answer I, I, she, he gave, and I'm like, well, you're in that game, in a game about the year 12,000 12, AD, fight between a war between androids and machines, I don't think a pair of heels is the thing you need to worry about. But overall, overall, minimum, you need to play it like at least um, two, two playthroughs of the same game before the game considerably switches up at the third playthrough. Well, Two is uh, the same game, but from different perspectives, and the third one is um, almost a completely different game. Well, I certainly agree that the graphics are very amazing, and the music that I have heard so far is very, very nice. Um, like I said, I've played very little, um, but I did enjoy what I played. It's a very intense game. It's quite fun. Um, my boyfriend has gotten at least one of the endings, uh, because he has the game as well. And maybe he will join us here in a little bit. I don't know. Um, but we are still waiting on one other guest, who I hope will join us before too much longer. Oh, well, I see what you mean. But the thing is, you, you absolutely need to keep uh, playing the game several times, because as far as I know, it's a Yoko Taro game. And Yoko Taro manages to, how you call it, to make a game, uh, make a game, change for every playthrough you make. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know that he has a history of giving various endings to a game. I mean, he, uh, the the near automata game is itself sort of a successor of some other games that he did. I can't remember the name of them off the top of my head. You probably know. Well. For example, it, this is ironic. Uh, I remember playing a Yoko Taro game without knowing it was a Yoko Taro game once. Dragon Guard 2. <laughs> I, I really liked it because I had a PS2 back in the day, but, uh, but I didn't know that it was uh, by this guy. 
Yeah, I think uh, that is the uh, series that uh, Near Automata is supposed to be sort of a successor to. It's like set so many thousand years later or whatever, but Drakengard or Drakengard or however you want to pronounce it is supposed to be the same world. Uh, well, it's like a, it's a bit of a mixed thing. Apparently, an ending of one of the Drakengard games, one of the giants manages to slip into our world. And by killing it, it apparently released a massive decision. But how much have you played of the game, though? I, I really want to know. Oh, the bullet hell section, huh? Yeah, so at the start, you, you start in these, um, you know, you start with like a a, uh, a cutscene, and then you get in these um, like jet fighter spacecraft type thing, and you go through that, which is, you know, the first time I went through it, it was only moderately challenging, but I had to, you know, start over again because I haven't reached the point yet where I can save the game. So uh, when I started over, it was a little more challenging, I found, and eventually mm -hmm. I made it through. <laughs> and and so I got uh, back to the city and I fought the first big um, boss that's the what kind of... Uh, rotary saw type thing that comes into the little uh, building you're in and I defeated that and then I started running out you know uh, fighting the various uh, robot type things uh, and Machines. went around the corner right ran, went around the corner and fought some more of them uh, over there and uh, I didn't get much further I did not get much further than that unfortunately before I died Yeah, uh, so you didn't beat the prologue yet? Uh, no, I did not. Because... Oh, well, <laughs> it's looking like a bit of a problem for you, is it? <laughs> well, no, I've only really spent one afternoon or evening or something playing it. So, I mean, I'll get back to it eventually. Uh, and I really probably ought to sooner rather than later. I think what came up that interfered with me continuing was some kind of event in Star Trek Online, which is my primary game. It's the game I go to more often than anything else. I uh, do have four fleets that I own and run, and uh, they are in two armadas, which I run. Um, so an armada uh, can have uh, one alpha fleet, which is the main fleet, uh, on each side is mine, and then mm -hmm. it can have three beta fleets, and each of those beta fleets can have three gamma fleets. So it can be a rather um, large group of players with uh, a variety of stuff, and it's meant to be a cooperative uh, effort, you know, so we can contribute to each other's fleet holding projects and, uh, you know, get invites to go to a holding project that might be, uh, you know, more complete than ours or vice versa, you know. So we, uh, it's mm -hmm. kind of, um, it's kind of like a big tribe, basically. That's actually cool. <laughs> That's actually really cool to hear. Um, before I, before I, sorry if I interrupt you here, but uh, um, I was a Wait a moment, what was I going to say? Fucking hell, I just forgot what I was going to ask you. Do you have any of those moments in which you, well, you forget what you were about to say? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, I think everyone does. Trying to remember, give me, just give me a moment. Oh, yeah, I was mentioning that, that besides of Nier Automata, I've decided to reinstall Call of Duty 2 for, for my computer in order to download a mod. Want to know what the mod is? It's called 1936-1939, the Spanish Civil War. Oh, well, that That's... sounds, yeah, that sounds very interesting. Um... It is, um, well, how do you call it? It is a mod for Call of Duty 2. Single player, of course, in which you get to play two 
two campaigns, the nationalist campaign and the republican campaign. Hey, that sounds really cool. It is. And the republican campaign also has an alternate ending to the war. In which the basically the last level of the republican campaign is to assault the the rebel fortress of Burgos and to capture General Francisco Franco and end the war. <clears throat> well, that would have been cool <laughs> to uh, to capture Franco. And I mean, the guy lived till what seventy five. He lived until seventy five, and uh, you, you, and he was a lucky son of a bitch too. Wanna know why? Why I say that he's lucky? Sure. Because originally the rebel command was made up not by him but by three people: General Sanjurjo, General Mola, and General Franco. General Sanjurjo died in a plane crash. And wanna know how General Mola died? In a plane crash. Huh. <laughs> 